This week it's chapter two in our series on chapters. Although I guess last week was more of a prologue, so maybe this is really chapter one. Could also be argued that last week was more of a preface, so maybe this week is the prologue. Regardless, we're talking about chapter structure today. This is a very important subject as the structure of each individual chapter within a longer work is a large part of what keeps a reader engaged. As we talked about last week, a chapter is more than just a division point in a longer work. When properly structured, each chapter becomes a key part of the pacing and flow of a story. Just like the entirety of the story, each chapter should have a compelling beginning, middle, and end. And this is a lot tougher because you need to nail it on every chapter as well as have all these elements flow through the rest of the book. So with that, let's talk about how to structure a chapter. This is really about the structure of each individual chapter. I'll talk next week about ways you can structure chapters to tie them together throughout a larger work. So let's start by talking about the opening of a chapter because that's like the first part of the structure. Chapter openings that don't hook the reader present the same problem as story openings that don't hook the reader. If they're not engaged quickly, they may not stick around. With chapters though, it's a different problem. With the exception of the opening chapter of the story, for each subsequent chapter, the reader is already theoretically invested in the story and characters, assuming of course that they made it past the opening. So the opening of each individual chapter is more about keeping that interest or adding on to that interest. The opening of each chapter should give the reader an indication of where that chapter is going. You want to start as soon as possible with character motivations and goals, or pose an intriguing question that should be answered by the end of the chapter. Also important is to establish the setting and viewpoint character for the new chapter. When it comes to viewpoint, if you're writing in third limited, you want to let the reader know who the viewpoint is for that chapter as quickly as possible. Make sure that it's not ambiguous what character's head we're in for that time. Readers will have a tendency to assume that the first character that's mentioned is going to be the viewpoint character for that chapter. And if the first word in the first sentence in the chapter is a character name, it's probably best that that be the viewpoint character's name, not some other character's name. Setting and location is very much a similar idea. Avoid mentioning other locations in the opening of a chapter until the reader becomes grounded in where that chapter is actually taking place. If it's a brand new location in the story, you want to make sure to give enough descriptive information that the reader can picture that location, but not so much that the opening just kind of gets bogged down in a description of the setting. One option here to overcome this is to specify the location that the chapter takes place either directly in the chapter title or in an epigraph at the start of the chapter. After the beginning and before the end comes the middle, and I don't have a huge amount of advice here. If the beginning of a chapter starts with establishing the viewpoint character and their goal, the middle is where they take steps to achieve that goal and encounter obstacles or setbacks. The chapter level goals that you set for your characters can't be too easy. There needs to be resistance, unexpected problems, assorted hiccups. This is the same kind of problem that you want to avoid during the middle of a story. Although since chapters are usually fairly short, the usual problems that come up in the middle of a story are not as big of a problem at the chapter level, since you'll be getting to the ending of the chapter fairly quickly. And speaking of endings, you basically have two options when it comes to ending a chapter. You can either come to some sort of resolution for the conflict that you've presented, or you can not come to a resolution. You will probably want to vary what you do from chapter to chapter. Having chapters that always end on a cliffhanger and never come to any sort of resolution until the very end of the book can be problematic. This can result in a lack of progress, it can make the reader feel like the story isn't going anywhere, and is ultimately kind of frustrating to read. 
At the same time, leaving things unresolved or having cliffhangers is one of the best ways to keep the reader interested to read the next chapter. Ultimately, what you want to strike is a balance between creating enough interest and intrigue for the rest of the story and giving the reader a sense of conclusion and a sense of progress at the individual chapter level. And you can still have the characters achieve their goal for the chapter while also still creating intriguing questions that will carry the reader through the rest of the story. They might defeat the lower level villain only to find out that the lower level villain has a higher level boss. They might capture some MacGuffin only to realize that it was the wrong MacGuffin or just something that would lead them to an even bigger MacGuffin. How you end each chapter and the questions that it creates leading into other chapters is something that we'll talk about next week. We'll also spend some time talking about some different elements of structure like parts and movements and scenes and all that stuff. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.